As I said about the brushes, they're only Cotman and I only carry four brushes. I say only Cotman, but they're a superb brush. But strictly speaking, they're a student's quality brush. But you can abuse them every day of their lives. I only carry four, my one and a half, half inch flat, which you see, my three quarter inch flat, which I've been using for most of the time, a number eight round and a number three ringer. That's it, I use four brushes. I use eight colors, but the colors are all artist quality paints. It's a bit of a fault economy to use students quality paint because it will fade that much quicker over the years as well. People like Constable and Cotman, the great masters of watercolor, used Winsor and Newton paint. So if it's good enough for them, it's certainly good enough for me. Artist quality paint. And a lot of people that's, think that that's very, very expensive. It can be, yes. Um, but visit my, visit my eBay shop and you'll find some really good prices on that. Now, whilst that's drying, I'm just going to go in here with a little bit of Ultramine Blue and Burnt Sienna. I'm going to carry on into my middle distance hills. Plenty of water into this blue to start with. Put that in there. And just filling my pencil line, like so. All the way across there. Now, if I put detail into that, I'm going to bring it further forward, and I don't want that. But also, I don't want it lying flat like it is at the moment. So rather than put detail in, take a little bit of paint out. Wash my brush out, squeeze out, suck some paint out, look like so. Just running across. Take some paint out. Now that hill isn't lying flat anymore. It's got a little bit of movement to it. There. Very, very simple. Now to the next hill, and this one is a little bit closer, so it's a little bit darker. Again, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. A little bit darker, a little bit less water into it. And this time, I'm going to leave the top bit unpainted. There is a reason for that. <laughs> I'll think of it in a minute. <laughs> All the way down to the bottom here. Carefully up to where I painted that green in. Like so. All the way across. Down to the, what will be the grasses. Now the reason why I've left that bit unpainted is because now I'm going to drop in with a little bit of yellow ochre. Just by itself, plenty of water into it, just yellow ochre. And stick that up there, and that sticks out like a sore thumb, all the way across. Sticks out like a sore thumb until that is, like I took light out of that one. I'll do the same here, but this time, look, merge the colours. Bring the yellow into the blue, take the blue into the yellow, soften the edge between them. And without fiddling about too much, I've got light on the house. How simple is that? And everything's still wet. Watercolours have got this reputation of being the most difficult medium, because if you make a mistake, you can't put it right. It's a nonsense. If you make a mistake, wash it out, do it again. Quite often, you look into a landscape painting with a path in it, and it looks like the path is kind of like sitting on top of the grass rather than sitting down in that landscape. That's because a lot of people paint a path on very carefully, being careful not to dirty it. If you want that thing to sit down in the landscape, get it dirty, get all the colors of the landscape into it. So while all, while all this lot is still wet, a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and I'll put the final wash on the path. But this time, I'm gonna deliberately drag in a hint of green from either side. Still with my big brush and Stroke over in the same way that I put the yellow on. But like I say, dragging in a hint of green, it looks like I'm losing it. <laughs> Some people would say I lost it a long time ago. But I shall drag this out again in a minute with the dark grasses. But now you see, I've got a hint of yellow in there. I've got a little bit of white paper showing through there. And I've got a hint of green and some blue. I've got all the colours of that picture in my path. This one over here, little path in the distance. If I paint that a distinct colour, I'm going to lose it at that kind of distance. Likewise, I can't leave it white because it sticks out like a sore thumb. So rather than paint it a colour, this is a new colour. It's called Muck Off Smock. And all I'm doing, just with dirty water, tone it down. Look, the path is still there. It doesn't 
speak out too much. Now, back to my glasses. Still with this big brush. And what I'm going to do, so far, I've just been slapping colour on, getting all my underwashes in place. Now, I need to make all that lot into proper foreground moorland grasses. So obviously, I need to paint it slightly more carefully than I've been painting so far. But again, Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna, a lot of Burnt Sienna into this thing. And now, carefully add my foreground grasses. He didn't think I was serious, did he? A bit on there. Looks a mess, it'll be fine. Tapping on, using the side of my brush. Because I use so few brushes, I use every side, every angle, every part of the brush. Now push in, flick up, look. Get some rough grass on the top there. I shall make sense out of all this in a minute. Pulling up. A little bit of grass in that little distance. Incidentally, whilst I'm doing this, notice how much lighter that sky has dried to what it was when I put it in. Carefully up to the edge now. A bit more than I can Up to the edge of this path. Make a mess. A little bit over here. And again, tapping on with the side of my brush and flicking up with the edge of the brush. There. And a few flicks there. Again, edge the side of it with that dark. You see how, how this really brings that path out again. And you see what I mean, by the way, by brush abuse. And this brush gets used like this every day of its life. Flicking up here in front. A bit more water so it spreads better there. Pull up, flick up, pull up, flick up. There's some grass on the edge. There. Now, back in with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. A little bit of that, a little bit of burnt sienna into it. It's very dark, but it's not black, because of course ultramarine blue and burnt sienna will give you a nice black as well. This is just a very, very dark blue. I just want that to be immediate foreground. Now, a few little bits of rough in that path here and there. Again, with the sharp edge of the brush, and still with also being blue and burnt sienna, I'm just tapping on them, like so. A few stones, lumpy bits in my path. Lumpy bits, that's another technical term for you. I'm just going to check that. Yeah, it's more or less dry enough. Because up on the moors, where this is, this is actually a place called Annick Moor in Northumberland, which is where we are at this very moment. At the side of the path, we have snow posts. Basically, they're just sticks. At the side of a post... Sorry. Basically, they're just sticks. At the side of a path, that show you where the path is when the snow's down. Fabulous age of recession. Still with that big brush and black, which is opening blue and burnt sienna. All I need are a few sticks, which importantly get a lot shorter as they go further away. Just drag my brush down. Like so. Now, make grass out of all this mess here. Come in close and watch this. All I'm doing is scraping paint out with my finger. Over there. If I wanted some longer bits, look. pull up. A little bit over here. Now, no one can tell. Now, no one can sell you this tool. 
fingernails. I start off my day pristine, and by lunchtime, my hands are always green. Now all I need to do is to add a little bit of life into this painting in the shape of a buzzard. And so for once, I'm going to use my number three rigger brush. And it's still with that black mix. And all I need to do is go up into the sky and we'll have a buzzard about there. It's a tick with a stick. Now, if I take my tape off, We'll have a nice white edge all the way around it, and we'll have a finished painting. And there we go. A very simple but very atmospheric little painting. Plenty of heavy sky and a good strong foreground to go with it. You'll notice the paper, a little bit of the bow there, but as it's drying out, because it's still all wet down here, as it's drying out, it's drying out totally flat. Again, Winsor & Newton paper, and it's only £140. Don't pre-stretch, I don't mess about with it. I chop a sheet in half, take it to the board. All this stuff is available on my eBay shop, or of course online at charlesevansart.com. A couple of nice little books, the Rage Paint series. And a lot of people worry about doing the drawing. Well in these, the tracings are actually in there, because they're quite complicated little pictures. But a lot of people say, isn't that cheating, using tracings? Maybe, but it gets a good result. And whilst you're following someone else's drawings, you're also teaching yourself to draw. Very handy little books. One's in watercolour and one's acrylics. Don't fiddle about with too much kit. I use eight colours. I use four brushes. Slap on paint and get dirty and have fun with it. Remember, this is supposed to be about fun. Enjoy and I'll see you soon.